Marshall was very canny. Yeah. Uh, there was no foundation, no federal, federal Department of Civil Rights in the South to protect him or any black lawyer. And so Marshall formed an unusual alliance with, of all people, J. Edgar Hoover. He would, he would, he would chat up Mr. Hoover. He would compliment him. Uh, uh, he would, uh, he would bring back uh, little knickknacks from the road uh, for J. Edgar Hoover, who probably threw him in a trash can as soon as Thurgood walked out. But, um, but there was a reason that he, that Thurgood got along so well with J. Edgar Hoover and other iconic figures such as Dr. King did not. What, do you, what, do you, what would you attribute that to? Well, Hoover, Hoover detested the Ku Klux Klan. He detested them. And so Marshall would get these horrific stories about the Klan and say, listen, Mr. Hoover, oh, I was down in Florida and I saw these 12 Klansmen they were walking down the street. They own this little town. Your FBI has to do something about that. Y'all got to clean that little town up. And Hoover would just get worked up. Oh, God, I get, where'd you see him at? He would just get worked up. And, and Marshall kept, kept needling Hoover. Uh, do you think that, that, that a lot of that, their, their relationship, though, was based on the fact that uh, Marshall was a lawyer. He, he believed in the rule of law. And at least Hoover held himself out as one given fidelity to the rule of law. Do you think that there was a commonality in their approach to problem solving? Yes, Marshall was very careful not to, uh, not to um, label himself uh, liberal. Mm -hmm. Marshall, Marshall's thing was the U.S. Constitution right. is the U.S. Constitution, and the truth needs no defense. You're breaking the law. If you arrest blacks for no reason, you're breaking the law. It says you can't do that in the U.S. Constitution. He used to carry it in his pocket. 